in favor? Against? Okay. Number two, declarations of interest. Uh, sub subsection one, any dispo dispo disposable pecuniary interest. No. No? I'm, not, I'm not sure, Chairman, if I, if I have to declare because it was unfortunate that my name is mentioned in the conciliation thing when it doesn't really go on past the first pecuniary. paragraph. It's not pecuniary. But it's an interest. So an well, that'll be, you can do it under section two if you want. No. Any well, other I'll answers? leave it because it's not, I, I'll leave it then. If it, if I don't think. Right. It. Number three, subsection one, to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on Wednesday 13th of September. Councillor Brooks? Yes, I had a, a couple of... Up, I didn't think we had to stand up when there was a deputy, I mean, but I might be wrong, oh. but uh, that's fine. Full council. It's the full council? No, it's for the mayor's chair. No, it's full council. Okay, well, no, no, I don't no, have a problem, me. but uh, just from the past. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, sorry. Um, I had a problem with the minutes and I'm now having a problem getting my comments which was supposed to speed up and stop me from waffling so if you could just bear with me one second um, I've lost my comments um, well do you uh, want me to help you raised 491.17 Freeman about the amount of the, the budget we were setting up no it's, a, yeah, it's I've got it now and it right. basically um, I, I was unhappy that the councillor's question is not recorded and the response, it is normal that the question is recorded and, and the response. Um, now, the only reason that wasn't is because it was included in the chat last month. It was, it was given as a, a, a um, it was given as a paper, the response, the question and the answer. Okay. Was, Mind if that's but that will get that stays with the minutes, yeah. yeah that's but fine. That I just didn't want to ask yeah. the question and not have it yeah. recorded. Um, and then there's the other thing which you've assured me will happen in the future. But the revised approved expenditure from the promotions of Oakham Working Group has not been minuted, and and also. Very importantly, um, we don't know from the minutes who we actually co-opted, so the names of the co-opted candidates need to be inserted into the minutes. Which one are we on now? That's the last, That's the last minute. Um, and then I have a... Sorry, if I can I pause. Co-opted. Well, you said both candidates were co-opted. Yeah, but it's a legal... Okay, thing that we really on. need to show. Will be amended, yes, please. So it's both in there. Thank you. Um, and then the other thing is just um, a thing which obviously I have mentioned in e email. Um, the minutes are supposed to just record the business of the council. And these minutes, in my opinion, are the worst I've ever seen. And that refers to the bulk of the first page, which um, has to me, quite a mess about the chairman's comments towards me and comments which apparently I made outside the meeting. And I don't think that should happen again. Also, at the bottom of the minutes, there's a note alleging to my conduct. The minutes have never been a, a place where um, it's reported of members' conduct um, or alleged conduct. So I would like that to. Um, be deleted. That's my proposal. That, 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 that is deleted. I can't amend now all that stuff that the chairman's written in the first part, but I would hope that that's not going to happen again in the future because it wasn't really council business. But I would like to propose that the note at the bottom of the minutes is struck off the record. Please. And that's my proposal. Well, I think it should stand because that's what happened. But then yeah. don't limit other people's conduct. You know, the other we, people we, were told we, off in that meeting. We, we will, <laughs> if anyone breaches the code of conduct, we'll record it. 
but then it shouldn't, it's not in the minutes. It's, if you feel I've breached the code of conduct, then it should be reported as a separate matter by the clerk to the monitoring officer. It, it is supposed to be a, a record of our business, not a report on members. You know, that's all I'm saying is that I would, I've made a proposal that that note is struck. If no one seconds it, then I have to accept it, but I think it's wrong. I'll, I'll say, yeah, because I, I must have asked to raise not that particular question, but in, in the working group 48817, we go into a lot of detail of who said what and when and where for, which we don't normally do. We, we don't normally list who said what and where for and what allegations were thrown about. We, 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 we just seem to have picked out that section there. And, and I know some members feel that, that the councillor involved, this is how they're going to deal with him, and it's, it's the wrong way. It is the wrong way. We, 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 don't, we didn't list who said what in any any other of the minutes, and we don't think we should be listing who said what either. But the right. small things written on the four eight eight seven. Exactly. I think we should be able to. Right, well, we've got a proposal. So I, I would second that one as well, well that that whole yeah. section is stuck. Um, yeah. Council, I know. Well, if, where, where something's happened in the minutes, so for instance, I raised a point on the bottom of page one where I did point out. That there was Martin wasn't using the recording table, and that's been documented. It happened, it's a fact, it's happened in the minutes. Mm -hmm. And in the past, when something's happened in the minutes, we said we must include it. So I believe there's nothing wrong with that. Where the councillor, where it says Councillor Brooks responded by calling the chair of the body, that is a fact, it happened, and it happened at that point in time. So, there, I haven't got any issues with those, but I can see the point which Martin has raised, where at the bottom, where it says this is quite ambiguous. It was noticed that Councillor Brooks repeatedly did not comply with standing orders in that he repeatedly refused to follow the chairman's instructions. Well, if it had been minuted at this point here on 48317, for instance, Councillor Brooks wouldn't desist from talking about things that were not on the agenda or specific to this. It would be more appropriate to put it there. So it would give a, an evidential base. That is, I could, you could write that about anybody. So that mm -hmm. is the only bit where I'd say if you're going to strike it, strike out the final comment. But the bits where they've been made pertinent to a specific agenda item, they've been captured against that agenda item. They may be pertinent in the future if there was a conduct complaint. So from my opinion, they should be retained in that part, but the final comment should be taken out. But that's my interpretation. Yeah, I'm, sorry, Chair. I'm, I'm happy for that. But what I would like to agree with um, Councillor Romney is that what was said in that first part was not an agenda item. You know, it was a report about the working group, not a report on his opinion of what, as alleged, I said, and that was the issue. So I would hope that that, you know, it'd be, I guess I did call him a bully because that's how I feel. And I, I don't mind that minute. But if he hadn't have done all that reading out people's emails, which had nothing to do with the working group, I wouldn't have come to say that in a public meeting. So I'm not trying to hide it. I'm just trying to point out that it wasn't council business. And I... I would stick by that. Um, stick by that, that we, and we're not going to win that. So if we just stick that the end note is removed, and I would be happy with that. If everybody wants, we've had it proposed and seconded at the end note. The proposal and second is that we strike strike out the end part. Yeah, the, the note. The note. All those in favour. Well, I've not said that could have applied to many people at the last meeting. It was dreadful. Stay on. Understand. Right, we're just going to so. Right, so. Jen. Apologies. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's just just an embarrassment. So you need to initialize page and then initialize your name or something. That that was a proposal to accept the changes. Yeah. The proposed to, is that? That's just that's that, with the just amendments yes. that we're going to name. Right. We're going to name the candidates on five oh five seventeen. Yeah. We track the final comments. Yeah. Would you mind just double checking what we did agree on the project later? Yes, there was a query on that, wasn't there? Yeah, the budget for the Yeah, the budget for the promotions yeah. of working open was that needs to be minuted. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We can put a pound sign and it can be added later. Oh, you want a sign in there? I missed that. So, do we know what the budget is then? I, I, it was it was possible for the scrolls, and I thought it was less than I thought it was. Was it five hundred pounds a pound per pair? Wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. five hundred pounds per pair. So, where it said a thousand pounds on the budget, it, it should be whatever just the scrolls value was, which I think was whatever it was. Two for five hundred. Two for five hundred. Yeah. 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 The, the other the other point I was trying to raise um, was the there was expenditure revised for the I believe it was the late night shopping expenditure and that's not been clearly defined how much. Uh, right, it, the the late night shopping expenditure was um, has it changed? It's in the promotional publicity working group values. The late night shopping budget was one hundred and fifty pounds for outside and two hundred and fifty pounds for inside. And the council, because it was challenged at the meeting, did actually vote to accept both of those, but it's not limited. No. So it needs to be added in that the PPWD was voted on and the budget was accepted at, at those values. Maybe I'm happy with that. You can now we've explained it. <laughs> 150 <laughs> inside and 250 inside. Right, part two then of the minutes, which is the extraordinary meeting held on Monday, 18th of September 2017. And that's A2 of your papers. And the action point was Councillor Saley and Woodley would give our response, which was duly sent. So, are you happy with those minutes? Yeah, but we think I propose to accept those. Put that yeah. a second it. Second it all in favour? Um, I believe I can't vote on. Yeah, you were. Oh, no, you were. I was only on the first. Yeah, you were <laughs> yeah, on the first. first, first one. Yeah, on the set. On the second. You're welcome yeah. to it. So yeah. You yeah, on the set. I say on the set, but yeah. not the first part. On the set. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. kind of. Yeah. Well, whatever the other phrase is. Yeah. 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 So, could we do a vote on this one then? Yeah, we proposed in the. Yeah. yeah. yeah we seconded it and yeah. just proposed yeah. the votes. So, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I wasn't. Yeah. Is this it for you four, Martin? Yes. Yes, yeah, so that's five, five, four, two. Two extensions. Two extensions. Well, Joyce and Dave. No, we weren't here. We weren't at the meeting. Just standing there. Two can't be eight people in the meeting. Yeah, there's something wrong there. I think it's six and two, isn't it? Six and two. It's been a long night. Yeah. Didn't start the job. <laughs> As the chairman's report, B. Thank you. Any other members' report? May I just raise it? What it is, I put two reports on the desk this evening. So rather than have to read them out, I put them there. One is the one, the Christmas scenario, which I put on there. So we don't need to take any questions tonight. People can have a look through that and let us know what they think. Uh, and the other one is a report on the World War One Commemoration Committee. Now, there was a question raised, because what it is, I did ask that the an event that went off at the <coughs> church, which was for the schools, I thought it would be interesting for the councillors to see what that event was. So it wasn't intended to, um, uh, to cause confusion, but I think it did. Um, but the Commemoration Committee have been doing things for schools as part of the national programme. And that was one of the events they did. Important thing just to note here that the committee, the World War One Commemoration Committee, the chairman sent his thanks to the town council for supporting the um, play that's been planned for next year. There are plans, in answer to your question now, about doing another schools event next year. I will ask at the next commemoration committee if any councillors could attend it. If it would be an invite only. But it's not gen it wasn't generally open to the public yeah. anyway. It was literally just the school children and teachers. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but it was oh, I went. It was actually a pity. I was um, yeah I was, I was yeah. Thank you Jan. Thank you. So uh, uh, any reports? 
They have they have made done some of the, the, the uh, patching, um, but I have no, did notice tonight when I walked the dog that under the big swing they pulled it up again. Yeah. The safety yeah. service, sorry, I'm safety service. They, 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 they keep pulling the dog. Just like having a bit of a camera there. Right, moving on then, number seven, is that the patient's part of the public? Mr. Simpson on the same one? Or just observing. <laughs> yeah. Right, number eight, um, just, just, Sorry, Chairman, mm -hmm. uh, just to say I was a bit late, uh, but uh, Oliver Bird sends his apologies, he's had a very busy day. He would have been sitting there. Right, uh, okay. Do you want to note it? Right, number eight, working groups. We've got one from the neighbourhood plan steering group. And I think it's mainly engagement with builders. Mm -hmm. um, we've had one or two presentations. Yes, I can't, I don't know whether I. I can answer any questions on it. No, but well, it's just general comment for the whole council. There, there's things that I've seen and obviously comments being made. It, it, it almost seems like the, the neighbourhood plan has come to a slowdown, let's say, and, I'm, and, and also we don't have um, the correct number of representation on the neighbourhood plan. And I'm not happy by, I'd say it each time, these rolling reports are not actually giving us what what is going on. We were told that the chairman is likely to have been coming to this meeting, but he's not here. So uh, I'm just wondering as deputy chairman whether you could um, look into it with the clerk and actually get an update report back to the council of what the situation is. Uh, we were told that the local clerk was going to uh, apply for a grant before he left to cover quite a considerable amount of expenses. We had no report of the situation of that. So if you if you could note that and um, maybe at the next meeting if we could have a more detailed report of the current situation. We could, you know, without mentioning names, some parish councillors who should be involved from Barleyport actually find that it's a bit of a joke, is the words that they told me. So that's um, all I will say. Well, I'm not sure the chairman would refute that, but... Yes, of course, uh, the, but the I grant, can only... Um, I can comment on the grant. Um, yes, um, uh, Mr. Plum did apply for the grant, and... Um, yeah, I think we're still hoping for one, aren't we? Mm -hmm. yeah. It has been applied for. Thank um, you. I did speak to the chairman about the meeting with builders because some would like to see us, but it was thought inadvisable. And of course, there's a degree of caution even when the steering group meets builders because there can be conflicts of mm -hmm. interest. And obviously, the builders at the moment are very keen to um, state their claims to. Um, move that land forward for building purposes um, and also the steering group are mindful of the fact that their views and that coming from the local plan are not totally in sync and they have that in, in, in Uppingham as well and there's, there's, there's different views on it but um, we'll note what has been said. Yeah. I, I, I note so and I noted the question you see about they didn't even know how the plan sits with the neighbourhood plan, and you would think they would know. 
I believe the chairman sent a, a question asking for that. Well, yeah, again, if I, I mean, the, the only thing I can say to that is we did meet the leader and deputy leader two or three weeks ago, and this was one of the things on the agenda. And um, they have reinforced the fact that they're happy that there is liaison with the planning directorate manager and um, the neighbourhood plan to you know, make sure there's plenty of dialogue. Thank you. Yeah, I'm still a bit confused, but perhaps you could just hear me. Um, Chris Clark was appointed the chair. Councillor A. Bennett elected as OTC representative. Well, that's ages ago. It's yeah. um, this year. Yeah, that did yes, happen. That, was, well, that was right, and he yeah. did participate. Yes. Um, well, he right. did take, take part. There was an event I went to out here. Yeah. Um, but of course, Councillor Bennett so is, no is longer, no longer Councillor Bennett, yeah. and he has left. And at the next meeting, I'm hoping the park will put on the agenda that we we um, bolster up the working groups because we have vacancies because Councillor Bennett left and one or two others have left. And I think it's good that we've left it a month really because it gives the new councillors a chance to see what uh, what the working groups are about. But um, I would be very hopeful next month we are filling all the vacancies. Right, so can we move on then? Um, Thank you. Statement of Counts, Appendix D. What did you say, sorry? Okay, oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to the new furniture, so I have more space. <laughs> so, on, on the Statement of Counts, it's just a query that I think you'll no big deal. Uh, it says in the audit report about a pack petty cash ceiling limit of two hundred pounds. Yeah, in this statement of accounts, we deal with a higher amount at two fifty. Um, is, is that moved on and it, at all? Um, we've had to increase it because um, we had um, a rather expensive, shall I say, a uh, franking machine, um, and the um, the. the the lease expired, we hope seven years and it expired this year. Um, and it was agreed that we weren't going to have used it again because it was costing us a lot of money. So, unfortunately, the petty cash had to go up to, to pay for postage basically. Okay, so are we just going to lift that up for next year, the limit um, going forward? That's all my query because it um, seemed contrary to the order. No, yes, perhaps it will okay, get us Thank you. Yes, thanks for it. Um, we'll note that it yeah. needs to be formally limited because the clerk does have a certain amount of discretion. Yeah, I understand that. It's just that yeah. black and white statement that seems comfy, and I'm yeah. sure there was yeah. a yeah. perfect yeah. reason for it. Thanks for books. Yes, um, some of my questions were very kindly answered um, by, by the clerk earlier on today, um, which was very nice. Um, but I still have an issue um, with an expenses payment to the chairman. Um, this business of telling me that we have a standing order that says, well, we can just, I don't mean no offence, but the clerk, the council gave that authority. You know, we, we as a council used to have to approve things and that is the law. And we gave the clerk many years ago emergency powers to five hundred pounds because once again a tree fell down mm. under the uh, chairman who is no longer with us. This was put up to five thousand, yeah. but the words urgent or emergency have been removed. Yeah. And I am slightly annoyed, as people know, that sometimes something comes to council and we have to approve it. Then when it doesn't, I'm told financial regulation, whatever, covers it. But I think that regulation needs to be looked at. Uh, our regulations for finances haven't been reviewed since January 2016, mm. if the date is correct on the thing. And it's no disrespect to anyone in the office, but I think that, you know, 5,000 pounds is fine. If it's an emergency, like when the tree fell down, just to do the clean up, because you can't call a council meeting and leave a tree for three days in a row. So that's what an emergency is. Everything else is not. 
And I don't get how we can, I've been told that Mrs. Lewis had all her expenses approved by council at the last meeting because she wasn't a member of the council and that the council had agreed in the budget for councillors to have it. Now we've been told, and I have it on recording, at the last budget presentation <coughs> that just because we put a figure in the budget, it doesn't mean we've approved spending it. So I know it's only a little bit of money, but we've got to sort it out so that we don't get this friction where somebody has approval, somebody doesn't, and then when I complain or someone else, we're told, well, the clerk has powers to do it. It puts the clerk in a very unacceptable position. So I would like that. And I'd also like to know this evening what the expenses were for. That's all. It just says mileage expense. Was it for training for the council or was it for what? Um, that's, uh, that's on that point. So I'm not being awkward. It's we, we have to account for public money. And yeah, well, I think yeah, she made the point. Um, yeah. Can the clerk answer what the expenses um, were for? The one, the mileage for Michael was um, for um, a visit to Stockholm Prison. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other was for training. Um, what I will say is, in, in all the years I've been here, if, if we've had in-house training or, it's, or mileage expenses for councillors, it's never come in front of us. It's never come to the, for the agenda item. Um, with our financial standing orders and our financial regulations, rather, um, there is a training budget, and members, if they so wish, can have training and mm -hmm. claim reasonable mileage or or public transport. Maybe I'm confusing it with the ones that when we bring mm -hmm. yours. That's why yeah, I think it all needs sorting because if we had to bring yours, why not mm -hmm. councillors? I mean, yeah. that's my. Uh, I've been on a couple of courses, uh, uh, Joyce and myself. I have one other thing. point. And, uh, we didn't, I didn't want to claim any expenses or mileage. Mm -hmm. I could have done, but I just didn't bother. Um, and, on, and on Michael's expenses, if he if he attended training, then it's covered under those, it's covered under capital expenses. If he's gone to an event where he's been invited as the mayor, that should have come out of his chairman's allowance. Mm -hmm. So I presume that would be deducted from the chairman's allowance yeah. account. Yes. yes, because you can't claim mileage saying that if he's gone to be invited as past his mayor, that's what the chairman's allowance is for to cut out of pocket expenses, which would include mileage, donations, because you put money in a donation thing. Mm -hmm. If you don't get received, you can still claim it back to claim that back. So, training, yeah. general expenses, because all of us can do that. But if I get invited to submit as a councillor and I choose to go, I have no right to claim any expenses, mm -hmm. mileage or other. Um, so but the chairman has got the allowance, which is so the, the yeah. stop of prison. Should have come out of the chairman. I'm sure it has. When you measure it across, I'm sure it will be measured. Yes, I'm sure that will be the case. The financial regulation, yeah, just to say. Yeah. Um, and um, I think it's 18.5 or something. The the general rule for us is 18.1, and um, that is the one I've I've quoted. Um, and, and I, I didn't get the full clarification on the last point I wanted to raise because it's the first time I've ever seen it. Um, we paid for um, data out, non, so I've written it down, non-contract data from Millennium Computers. We seem to, I mean, I know Alison said to me that in an email that we're going to bring it to council soon because contracts are up, but we seem to be paying lots of bits and pieces to, to Millennium all over the place. and, and this one is very, very new to me because yeah. I've, I, I, I've never ever seen no, us being like out of contract data. Alison. But what, what, what is it, Alison? It's for, is it? um, it's for the, um, it's for the backup. Yeah. It, but when, when all the contracts came to, to council, it was, um, it, what when it, when they, when the contracts were came back, mm. um, there was a bit of a question mark with Millennium because of the website and what we're going to do. So mm. that needs to come back. So at the moment we are out of contact with them because right. nothing, we didn't resolve. We oh, that's what it means. So we were going to look into maybe changing our um, supplier. As it happens, we just we stayed with Millennium. But what it means is so it's the monthly um, backup system. But then obviously because we're out of contract, we're paying it just a slightly higher rate. About three times the amount. 
Um, I think it was. What I'm concerned about is that, and that's not saying you're going to forget, but if that is just for what we've used so far, I'm concerned because either you or the administrator is doing a very good job of piling data on, which is like all the agendas from the past and whatever. Is that bill going to get bigger and bigger? That's my fear. Oh, no, because that, it's that is, data that is, usage. It's just the it's just that the two um, computers get backed up every night. Mm. It won't be. I can double check with them. But I don't know. Mm. If um, it's not gone up mm. due to volume in the past. If that makes sense. Yes. It's gone no. up in, in figures mm. because. I don't think there's a pain at all because Alison knows how many times the phone they have what they've promised me and they still haven't come back with the, the instructions of how to do it. So only by the, the goodwill of a member of council am I getting any emails at all and I just think it's disgraceful. They've told me they would send me the details so I could do it myself, nothing has come and that's several weeks ago now. Well, that's disappointing. I mean, personally, I had issues as well, but they came to my house and well, sorted it. Do that. And they sorted it in 10 minutes. I sorted my own. Well, don't we to send the instructions of how to do it? So yeah, I think, we're, I think we're in danger of digressing. Yeah. Not, no, it's yeah, a matter of principle. We should be paying them if they're not fulfilling their work. Well, no, they obviously well, are on this. Well, can I say, out. I mean, two, two members have raised issues here. Mm. I think you should um, perhaps write to the clerk. Um, you know, addressing that, and if you feel there are improvements that can be made, let us know. Okay, right, right, right. Um, finally, can I just say on the financial regulations, the chairman and I have gone through them and we um, have made one or two recommendations, but uh, we've got a slight backlog, and one or two things have been referred to the next meeting. Um, but you know, if you have issues with them, please raise them next month and rather than sort of then carrying on. No, well, I, would, I would just like that word put in urgent or emergency only. Well, we can look at the time, you know, mm. if, 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 if it's the chance. So, can we approve the accounts? Can I look at the proposal? Second, Adam? Adam? Uh, Nick, 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 yeah, all in favour? Against? Abstaining. Abstaining. Two abstentions. Right. Thank you. Right. Number ten. Chamber furniture. I'm sure we all want to move this one. Paul, you have to see. Councillor Lowe. Yeah. I mean, the paper speaks for itself. 2014. This was originally looked at. I've revisited it because one of the main reason I revisited. I had a meeting in here the other day with uh, one of the many charity organisations that we let use the chamber, and there was only four of us at the meeting. And uh, we needed binoculars to see each other across the table. Um, and having looked into it, I mean, for the value that's on there, not only could we get some more appropriate professional furniture, which would be then flexible enough to adapt to different size groups, um, it would also be stackable, which is one of the cost, big cost savings here, rather than being trying to be clever with cantilever furniture and all the rest of it. Um, and the chair thing, um, the, it, on there it says budget chair, £25 for 15 This is the, an example of the chair. This is a very nice chair. Demonstrate that it works with a chair in operation. So you know, uh, I'm not, my head is above the parapet, as I say. I did a quick check for anybody that's interested. And I'll just pass a couple of these round. If we wanted to go for a, a more modern looking style chair, which um, You'd be looking at paying four hundred pounds for the same fifteen, um, and that's what it is really. Pretty straightforward, I think. Um, oh, I and very ones. Very very no, like no, 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 this is the black ones. Is what, what I quoted. These, yeah. 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 These are the budget ones. Yeah. Is that what's, oh, that's it's curved. And that's curved. And that's yeah. little bits at the side. Oh. So, so fifteen chairs like this, I can get for twenty-five pounds each, and they stack all together. All together. All together. All together. Twenty-five pounds for the lot. No. Yes. Well, Fight it out, not quick. So, <laughs> so, so that's yes. what it is. And, uh, I mean, if anybody, and the thing is, I looked at the measurements, and Vince Howard and others in the past, I mean, even yeah. Alan Walters involved, did various measurements, and the measurements were along the same lines as what they had done. And with a little bit of sensible planning and operating, we would still be able to get it in here. The important thing to note from the paper is that all councillors would either be facing each other 
or the chair, and um, it would be open at the back there, so all members of the public would then be able to see straight at the centre rather than having our backs to members of the public. And also, I work, work, looked at the measuring space of what we have at the moment, and because of our layout, we, we have small areas. With the new tables, everyone would have a guaranteed minimum size of what's been stated on there, 800 mil by 600 mil. Okay. Could I ask about the chairs? Please, can I ask about you can do, but it's, it's non-negotiable. Just... No. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that kind before, and um, the actual word the joint of the chair thing, and not all that brilliant, that bit there. No, 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 seriously. Well, I'm 17 stone, so it's... Ooh, it's when you tip back. Oh. Oh. You never tip back. <laughs> well, well Ooh, poor, poor, poor working factors on chairs is yeah. not my responsibility. <laughs> budget chairs is. <laughs> Thank you. And um, all, all I wanted to know is with the new proposal, which is fantastic, makes a lot of sense, what's happening with the recording spaces? Because um, it's not mentioned in the plan, so is that on? It would, it would stay as it is. Okay. It would, it, I haven't taken uh, that to me is what the council agreed, it wouldn't impact on that. It would pretty much still be in this format, it might be a little bit tighter, but. But a bit of clever work, and because if we go for everything that's on the paper, on hang on, please. If, if we go for everything that's on the paper, which is what my proposal is, is that the screen would be a drop down screen from there that would come down yes. as we need it. The projector would be hanging from the ceiling and would be cabled in. Yeah. And, that, and I'd put some indicative costs on what the cabling and the junction boxes would cost. And because I didn't get hold of them quite cheaply myself, I put down prices from the third that I've spoken to, you know. HDMI box and trunking, the cable, the trunking, and the mounting box, fifty pounds. If we go to a firm to do it, they'll probably be looking at three, four hundred pounds. Absolutely. Yeah, well, you know that though, being in IT. So so mm -hmm. I've costed everything out. All it would need to be is that we have to get an electrician in to wire it in and our own contractor to bolt it to the ceiling. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Can I say? Yeah, please. Right, thank you. On this chair. Uh, two, no, two things really. The tables, do they have a modest panel? Nope. They can leave them. Do these? They do at RCC. That's and the other thing. Is that because they're foldable? Is that because they're foldable? Yeah. You can have modesty panels, you can buy them as an extra. If you really wanted to, but I, I looked at it and I'm looking at how close people are going to be, and I was going to focus on the agenda as well. Maybe you'd have to go down that path. Uh, can I also ask or uh, suggest that when we get rid of these tables, we go to some reputable firm like Tenants for a quote? These are very good tables. Yes, very Sorry? Yes, fair enough. Yeah, yeah I, it went elsewhere and it was all, almost taken away, and you paid me £10 for taking them away like in the past. And really and truly, we need a good antique dealer type, like tenants, to give us a quote on these tables. Tenants? Well, I'm sure the councillor Lowe is a Firewood.com. <laughs> I was going to suggest we donate them for the Lions Firework bonfire, but because um, it's brown wood and then they're too big. Uh, but anyway, um, moving on. Um, I, I think it's wonderful and something the council was told to do back in 2009 in a report that this was not suitable to meet in as it was. Um, so, but I do have one slight issue with a monitor and screen in this small room. It's mainly the definition and also if we're going to be in a horseshoe shape that way under a monitor screen up there, the chairman wouldn't be able to see it and people surrounding the chairman. And what I thought, because they are very reasonably priced now, um, is, is that we go for on a fixed pole the similar type size monitors that they have at RCC, which can plug into a laptop and it's clearly put on a HD screen for us. Um, it, you know, it, it just, it's better. I find that when we've got this, I've been to planning and things and it's like prop this on books and it's all, I know we're gonna have it on there, but it's just not clear to see what's on it. That's all. So it's just a suggestion that, that you know, we agree what it is, but I would have liked to have, um, and I'm very wary that these things now take a month 
before they can come back to council for anything, um, that we could have looked into that alternative so that the people sitting there, you know, we could save money on paper. We wouldn't need these printed because the laptop would be there showing the agenda items and all sorts. Be modern. Right. You know. So I'm, I, I, I have no, I have no problem with everything else. I just have a slight problem with a screen up there and a monitor that's we, not. We, uh, in actual fact, I mean, we we could quite easily you could bin that completely yeah. and that, and you could have uh, a widescreen television on this wall. You could have a widescreen television on a couple. Of yeah, rooms. it doesn't have to be in the middle. Um, a widescreen television. I can tell you, because in fact, you can buy any widescreen television from PC World or from mm. any uh, outlet, and you're looking at a budget for a decent size one, a decent quality. Because we've just done this at work, you're looking at. In the re we bought some quite cheap because we bought ten, so we looked at five hundred and fifty pounds. But realistically, mm. we'd be looking at about eight hundred pounds. Yeah. So if the if the if the council choose to go down that route, they can. But they're not that big. They're not big enough. Widescreen, probably yeah, about that wide. Yeah, it's a five-inch screen. Yes. It's not big enough. So, yeah. uh, well, I'm, I'm, well, we say they're not big enough, but I mean, we have been managing with a monitor and a projector for X amount of years in this room. And at the end of the day, I mean, it could be that it's still it's worth putting them in because that's right. At, at a monitor, at the projector screen at £166, we've already got that beast there, is yeah. actually quite negligible. And we could always look at another item where we do have some bringing in some screens, some TVs. Or one. Or, or one and having them all mounted. So I, I wouldn't dismiss that. Like computer. Because I think we'll always go back to a screen and that because we've mm. got that. So we need to make use of that because that costs £300. And that'd be on the pole up there. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, and I was going to say my proposals that we accepted still. Second. But, oops. Uh, Sorry, you should say that. <laughs> <laughs> when it's on that screen, even on that screen, you cannot see the small mm. print. Right? So we don't want a small screen. Even there, there, and there. If we can't read the print. It's the definition though on that, isn't it? It's a bit woolly, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, but, but the ones down at RCC, you can't even, on those big side screens, you can't Well, it's not on here anyway, so it doesn't matter. No, we want, we want a drop down screen, sorry. Well, the proposal is we consider the report, which I think we have done, make decisions that's appropriate. Do we want to give the author a bit of uh, latitude in. Well, uh, he's proposed it, Yeah, sorry. I, I was going to propose the paper as it's written because I still think we'll be using a projector screen yeah. for that yeah. for different venues. Yeah. Um, and, and then TV, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I, I have a comment just about the finance because we, we, we've got a thing saying that Greg's is going to do it. But we don't know how much, so could we? Uh, well, does Adam have an idea? Because we need to authorize. Twenty pounds an hour. Twenty pounds an hour. How many hours do you think it would take? Because we could uh, give double the budget, but it's important yeah, that we right. do. I bet you're looking at about no more than ten hours work, maybe only five. So do we give him two days or something, just in case? All you've got to do is all you've got to do is run trunking up this wall out there. Yeah. That's about an hour's work, and then you've got to run electricity from here up to there, which is a couple of hours work. So I would say that you're probably looking at two, even if you put another five hundred pounds in tops. Okay. Because if so you're can we put that, put that in, so there's no... electric, yes, get electric. So five hundred pounds more just for that. But... Right. So we've got the proposal in the second, just subject to an up to an additional five hundred pounds yes. for installation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. Just cool. Yeah. Save it. yeah. It's done. Well, I'd like to thank yes. well, that's, done a good that's a very good deal. The chairs, in particular, even if they only last for a few years, it's got to be a good deal. There's only a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay in there just to test it. <laughs> <laughs> Number is this, 11. Is no, you're going to be around. Take that photo. I fall off my chair. For Lucas. Uh, uh, yes, something? Chairman, I think uh, on reflection we'll defer this because what's the point in discussing it when we haven't got the structure right yet? If you see what I mean. So, can we defer it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Otherwise, it's a lot more work. Yes. I mean, in Thank the meantime, you. obviously the website does give all the. Yes, but well, mm -hmm. not everybody. Don't keep saying the website. Not everybody reads the red website. So, all our details are on three notice boards in the town, probably one in the toilet as well. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Chairman, but it doesn't give 
the exact what everybody does uh, and all the co committees that we've got. It doesn't give us all that information. Well, hopefully next month we'll know all the yes. subcommittees and working groups. And I hope so, by, by now. Yes, yes. the structures are no, to, like, the okay. to have a proposal to defer. I'll defer. Yeah, I uh, would defer. Second that. Second that. All in favour deferring? That saves us 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Right. I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about this. And I'll show you all this. But look at the part. Um, all our reports in the past have, done, have been done by symbiosis. Um, I did speak to Stuart Kidd, the um, he did say to me that the reports, trees only really need to be done in two or three years, he said to me, and a lot depends on um, basically the size of them. Um, but he went for only two or three years. Um, this is something you obviously you do you want to have for us. Yeah. Well, I, I, just to say that I, I was criticised uh, in the last few weeks of being tree warden and not not doing my job. But when we went on to Royce's recreational ground uh, with the forestry officer, he told me about the, the system we've got at Rotten County Council. I gave it to Alison and because of fair, fair amount of work, and I'm defending the clerk on this, that it's only just come to light. It's only just been approved. It, brought to the council. Can I say that? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I know about it. Uh, the forestry officer was very enthusiastic. It will be done properly. It is local. Uh, we don't have to have symbiosis and arrange for a time for it to all to be done. It's very difficult. Now, symbiosis has given uh, two years ago, I think it was, I meant to bring it with me, uh, their survey, but we've had change of clerk, change of council, change of this, change of that, and the, the tree warden of this parish and the clerk have worked jolly hard on this report, okay? Um, they, they <laughs> right, right. I, I've just made my point. They're charging yes, about £36 an hour. Yeah. He said he, which I, I think will be a considerable um, saving to what we pay yes, in biosis. And I think, as Joyce has said, they are local, they know they do know yes. the history of some of our trees. Yes, of course they do. Absolutely. And we're going to get a free quote. Um, yes, he said that if we buy. Yeah, if I. Um, that we have we have um, plans of all the trees with tags on, and he's happy. Stuart's happy to to give us some kind of quote for, for all our sites. And we've yes. got an expectation of a saving. Oh, yes. absolutely. Which seems a bit of a no-brainer. Council books. Yes. Um, I'd like to thank the clerk and the tree warden for this wonderful report. It's about time. Um, I'm sorry. It's an apology. Not it's about time. No, it is about was... time, Councillor Lucas, and I'm not arguing, and don't interrupt me, please, or we'll ask the same to be noted about you. Um, anyway, that's my sense of humour. Um, oh, really? Yes. Um, what I would like to see is that this is done pretty urgently, because we're probably going to have another dreadful winter, and every time it happens, we, we have a pretty <laughs> bad situation with trees lately. Um, we set a budget for this year, which was pretty random because I sat next to Councillor Lucas and we just said, what do you want? And that was basically how it got put in the budget. And we haven't really done anything major this year. So I was hoping that the clerk could arrange this so that the reports are ready, that we can approve work that's required to be done because there's a lot of work to be done. We've got a tree on the ground in Barley Fortville, just that it's tucked on the side, it's forgotten about. Um, and then we know how to set the budget for the next year because I think by the time this report could be completed, we will be considering next year's budget again, which will probably be October, November, December. I don't know. Um, so I, I, um, 
And that's what I read in a, in a report. We set our budget in October for next year. You know, we start on it. So it, there is an urgency to make sure that we know what's going on and we get to do it. And I fully support the go ahead of this, but if it's done urgently. You want to come back? It, well, it only, only to say that a, a tree on the ground is not dangerous and it's very good for hedgehogs and ants and what have you. Uh, but uh, I echo with what uh, Councillor Brooks has just said. The crack willow at. Uh, You're in the cat's uh, throat. Uh, the crack willow at uh, Willow Crescent. I'm the willow crescent. It is quite, quite dangerous, and the sooner the better, please. Well, we've got a recommendation. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I would just would like, sorry, um, it makes sense. I don't, I'm missing the point of this report, why we're debating the previous <laughs> report, because I just read this as we recommend that we get no. the three quotes, and then I guess you make a decision. Yeah. I, I don't understand what I'm missing so if someone could help me or advise me that I'm not missing anything. Okay. Right. Thank you. Right. Yes. A recommendation we get a quote. Yeah. Um, I would chairman I propose that we accept the report and that we instruct the clerk to investigate further for yeah. three non obligatory quote or three I'll assessments as per Council Brooks is seconding or in favour. With the comment of we're doing it speedily, please. Uh well. How quickly can you do it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just, uh, let's just do what the paper says and then we can. I think it's the work afterwards that needs to be done. Yeah, you can find it. Right, okay, so number 13, financial reserves, banking accounts. I'll speak to this. Um, uh, I went in the Melton Bodry uh, Building Society some three months ago and uh, um, check that they can take accounts. I got all the various forms. Um, unfortunately, it's been a bit delayed, but here we have it before us. Um, the recommendation is we put up 85,000 on deposit with the Melton Business um, Savings Account. They get a small rate of interest. Um, Whereas at the moment it's with HSBC and I don't think we're getting any interest. Um, but more importantly, it's 85,000 that has um, sort of a safety net around it. Mm. Right, Council Brooks? Yes, I'm, I'm very pleased that this has come to Council and I will be proposing that we support it. It's been probably two to three years that this has been floating around um, because it was Richard said he was going to look into it. Um, so, but I would like to point out as a member of the finance group to yourself that there are other banks in the town as well and we do need to spread a little bit more. You know, there's Barclays, there's um, Lloyd's, and some of them there. there. <laughs> you know, so they would all take accounts. So hopefully, perhaps by the next meeting, we'll have at least two more accounts to safeguard the, the public money. But I would be happy to propose that this is a uh, moved ahead. <laughs> but anyone else might want to comment? I don't know. <laughs> Just one place. Yeah, yeah. It's a start. That's just like a sum. It's a start. Let's do it. It's a very small place. It's a really good building society. It's brilliant. Sorry, Nick. It's highly. No, no, it's, sorry, it's it's not about the building society. It's about the protection that is offered by the government on the loss of the Absolutely. society mm -hmm. and that's on a per account basis not just a per relationship basis so we just need to clarify bearing in mind that our on deposit is 236,000 currently mm. yeah. looking at this that that is enough adequate protection but other than that I think it's yes. perfectly yeah. I mean, sound and rational yes. suggestion yes yes no, I mean we're looking at other Outlets as well as, right. as suggested. But, yeah. Yeah. Can, can I just uh, sorry? Can I just add that the Melton Library Builders Society have been very, very uh, good to this town with uh, charities. I know of one charity that has sponsored, and the Melton Library Building Society has sponsored for years. So please let's 
It's a start. It's just a couple of tweaks. Um, yeah, just, um, I know we, we spoke about uh, the seat control and brought that in. Um, and I, I, I agree with what's written here, but I do think uh, where it says here on um, without prior arrangement with, with, of the council meeting. So if you want to bring something back, you can't do it because you've got to get full council to agree to bring it back. That doesn't seem to make sense. In, in previous authorities I've been on, you've had to have, I can't remember rightly, two thirds of the members have to sign a letter to bring something back for, within six months. Yes. So th the reason I say this is because as it is now, no, no member or members can bring an item back. But if there's something that needs bringing back that's important or urgent, if two thirds of the members sign a letter, then that would come back. Bureaucracy don't like that. Yeah, but that, that there is no way of, of, and I think you do need to be able to bring something back because you never know. Well, we keep mm. doing that, don't we? <laughs> yes. But so I'd just like to change, change the words just slightly. Yeah. Two, two thirds to sign a letter of members. Okay. Right. I'm, I'm a bit concerned. So. The fact that we are asking once again in a very short period of time to change our standing orders, I can see why. But you know, surely the six-month rule should apply to this. But the six-month rule is farcical, and that's why it was dumped by the council because it got to the point that every time the chairman wanted to make a change or change a decision, we just have to keep putting our hand up every meeting saying, "Let's change it." So I agree with. Um, Councillor Romney, that that needs to be looked at because it is a bit farcical. And you know, I read the internal audit report that says, because I said that you know, I, from what I've learned from other places, that these reviews should happen at the AGM. But he's actually said it doesn't necessarily have to happen. But the problem we've got with our standing orders and regulations is that they are changed practically every meeting, and you know, it's it is not good. You, we need to get to the situation where somebody sits down and looks at the model code of whatever it's called and they are brought to council just once a year because when I look at that, it, the only reason it's back here tonight is because changes were made but made in error and that's all we keep doing and, um, I, and I'm not sure that we should even be considering this because it's only considered last month. Well, so, you know, that's the problem, and that's the farcical thing of the six-month rule. I understand why it's there, so you didn't get a councillor every month bringing back something that they didn't agree with, but it is, it does need to be looked at properly and sorted. I think, I think if, I, if I try to work out what you and the chairman have actually done here, because we voted on the six-month rule, it's not in our standing orders, nor are you really doing here. Is saying you we need to change standing orders to incorporate the six month rule. Mm -hmm. If that's how I understand it, and that is correct because that does need to come back to change it. It is in there. <clears throat> sorry. Um, it's but my bit. It's just the, the the mechanism for members to bring things back is is the two thirds of members of the council. Yes. Um, in in defence. Um, we keep being told, and I'm on most of these working groups, that we need to do the review, and then the review's out of date, it hasn't been done. So yeah. we've gone through them all, and we've tried to um, put in quite a bit of effort. It may be this one has got a bit ambiguous. Mm. Uh, I mean, the suggestion might be that I, hopefully next month we'll bolster this working group up and um, get one or two more heads on it and um, can try and get it so that it um, uh, is a bit more appropriate, shall we say, in the lines of what you're suggesting. Right, I think Andy was first. Yeah, just that um, 
if things are going to happen next month, those during the dinner break, we can't then alter this again because we've just agreed to this six months thing. So why don't we leave this until after well, that's the we've got the, um, the new structure of the new people in the working groups? Sorry? With all due respect, we, we, you can't leave it because we've already decided that the six month rule will now apply to this council. And what the, what the chairman and, and the vice chair have, 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 have worked out is that we need to check to get that to work. You need to change standing because at the moment it's not in standing orders. So it because the council has already voted that, that the six months rule applies. Adam might have voted out of the board. Yeah, it happens that all through the episode, whenever we've had any board, because it's our own standing orders, mm. at any point in any at a meeting, it states it's in our standing orders. We can resolve to make a proposition to suspend the standing order, and that is in our standing orders. Yeah. So it actually makes a far more than our standing orders. Mm. So the six months, as it stands at the moment, all that we prepare to propose and accept on this paper is. And then maybe we could do this now before we continue talking about all the stuff in red, which I would completely blank and ignore. Um, is I would propose that we accept the comments that the dignity of work, bullying, and harassment, that there's no changes and the review date is now set as of the 13th September, and the grievance procedural that there's no changes. Oh. And so from the paper, I would just propose the two last items we accept that there's no reviews and, defer the rest. and then defer the rest. Mm. Uh, second. second. Oh, right. <laughs> Can, can I just ask something from the clerk? When we used to do, but they didn't come so often when the clerk was previously here, we, we, we used to bring standing orders to council for change. And then there was what was known as the calling off period and an act was quoted where actually people sat as we did now and made changes to the proposal. And then we had to come back to the next meeting for the final change. That seemed to have went by the way. And I can clearly remember that happening. Um, th this, I agree with Adam as well on the thing that we do have that standing order, which says we can revoke anything, which I find a bit strange. But anyway, um, but in our standing orders, we do already have something about the six month. And I read this that we were just changing the wording um, because we voted on the six month at the last meeting, I think, for something. So. I, they are in a total, uh, no, no disrespect, terminal. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Councillor Lucas. So I, mean, I know Peter doesn't want me to say that it's not worked, but it, it needs looking at from point A, as I completely said, and go all the way through. And I've asked at many meetings, and, and you know, we have the model code of conduct and we go through it, whether it's with the admin assistant or somebody. I'm not suggesting a qualified person out of a company, it just needs somebody with a fresh perspective to yeah, well, certainly. I think, yeah. I think yeah. Adam's um, can I But I could second well, Adam's thing well, okay. if that's helpful as well. I've got the standing orders here. We reviewed them in August, we went through them all. The trouble is with open standing orders, it's a bit of a hodgepodge. Mm. Um, there's not standing orders, there's the county council standing orders. Mm. Uh, we've got, we've, yeah, yeah. Um, but we've sort of, it seems over the years, there's been bits added to and yeah. taken away. So uh, I think that's why we sometimes have this situation. And then we go to NARC for advice and they say, well, they're not their standing orders. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think what has been proposed makes sense. Yeah. Then when we bolster the committee in a month or two, they can look again at it and yeah. we'll get some more heads. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 so we're yeah. ignoring all the rest. Yeah. Yeah. So just doing the back bits for the moment. Yeah. 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 I've written down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. um, yes. Thank you. I think I've lost somebody listening and realised the rubbish. <laughs> I've lost progress every month. It is progress. We had progress today as well. It's right. Um, number 15. Yeah. Install vehicle restrictions. The entrance to cuts close with Hendrix J. Councillor <laughs> Lowe. It's a pretty straightforward paper. All it is, uh, many, many years ago, there used to be a gate yes. onto Cuts Close, so vehicles couldn't just drive on there. This summer, where we have engaged some services where they could use the park, 
and they've been charged for it, we've then discovered that in actual fact they've taken that and mean they can use it whenever they want. So vehicles have been going on there. I think the count has been rather fortunate that we've not had people oh, yeah. set up, you know, and I don't, I, without being disrespectful, but you do get modern travellers that like to set on open green spaces. Mm -hmm. And I believe do the council, and I've not done any costings on this, but do the council basically want to look at the possibility of putting up some bollards. We did it on the Church Street entrance to the old schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. Those three bollards there where the pedestrian access is on cuts. The town council put those in to stop vehicles driving up to the old schoolhouse. Yeah. And all this is, is that do we now want to look at, it would be protecting that green space, even though vehicles are allowed on there, on there under the green plane, but it has to be when we know that they're going on there. Um, and depending on what you go for, if you go for the fancy black bollards, the attractive Victorian style ones that are on Church Street, and indicative costs, £400 each, plus installation. If you go for simple drop down or drop into the ground ones, you're looking between 50 to £200. But if the council wants us to go ahead, we instruct the clerk or the, the assistant to the clerk, to maybe look at further inquiries and bring it back to them to organise it. So that's all it is. All right, thank you. Right, yes. Yeah, I, I fully agree because um, people do drive in there um, and they shouldn't. Um, but um, I don't want to see anything ugly. And as a person who has helped to take out the bollards at the old school, which I campaigned to get, they are dreadful, they are cast iron, and they're probably heavier than me. Um, so I was going to suggest this evening that possibly Adam or the clerk look at um, very strong ones, because there's no good having those floppy drop-down ones, because people will vandalise them. Um, if you go to what they know as the Buff Club in South Street, they've got setting concrete ones that metal pull ones. up, mm -hmm. proper solid square metal ones, which could be painted so when it's up it looks attractive. I think we would probably only need two there. And, and as Councillor Lowe says, we are very lucky that people haven't took up residence there. Only about, I think a year ago, they moved into Church Street car park. Mm -hmm. and they, did. they could have moved into Tuts Close. But what does concern me is if we do do that part, there is then, of course, the part from the Burley Road car park. Maybe we could get something along there because we did have the incident with the wedding with the van on and a, and a, and a, and a, um, a generator for a wedding reception. And, you know, they just drove off the car park into it. So we, we maybe only need to look at the whole protection of the whole park there. Okay. Because if we, we wouldn't be able to afford to get rid of, you know, the sure. travelling community if it happened. Um, some years ago, some months ago, of course, I brought a paper about the Heritage Lottery, uh, looking into this this uh, idea of new railings, etc. And it was thrown out because we couldn't employ a certain person to help me and Robert Clayton to get this heritage lottery grant, right? But I was envisioning when it was the heritage lottery grant that it would be nice gates like Melton, those sort of gates. However, Helen Woodhouse, who came from the castle, improvement thing did say to me please do not put railings from the castle railings to the end of the footpath i don't know what the reason was to the footpath on Burley road car park i don't know what the reason was but she